Okay, hello everybody, here we are, and we are talking uh, about the Landau symbols, and uh, uh, we introduced Landau symbols, and now the task of this video is to help you in computing limits. with the aid of Landau symbols. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first result I want to, to give you is a theorem, which is also known as the principle of negligibility. And this principle says the following, as usual we start by the domain of the functions we are introducing, so E is a subset of R, x bar is an accumulation point of E, we will compute a limit for x going to x bar, and then capital F, capital G, small f and small g are functions from E to R. And uh, moreover, we have that small f is little of capital F, small g is little o of capital G as x goes to x bar, okay? So there are f and g, the small functions, the small symbols, that are negligible with respect to the corresponding large symbols, okay? Then, we have that the limit for x going to x bar of a fraction in which the numerator is capital F plus small f, and here capital G plus small g, is equal to the limit for x going to x bar of capital F divided by capital G. Moreover, if one of the two limits does not exist, then the other limit does not exist too. Okay, so the two limits have exactly the same fate. They exist together and they have the same value. This means that the presence of the little o here and here is completely neg negligible, it's completely useless. So let us see the proof, which is really elementary. The proof is the following. We have capital F plus small f, capital divided by capital G plus small g, and here we have f over g, and so we gather out f from the numerator, so it, it remains here 1 plus small f divided by capital F, and here 1 plus small g divided by capital G. Okay? And uh, now, due to the hypothesis that small f is, cap is a little o of capital F, we have that here, this fraction, small f divided capital F goes to zero as x goes to x bar, and this fraction here, small g divided capital G goes to zero as x goes to x bar two. So, 
In principle, this is, a, this is the end because all this fraction tends to 1. Then it happens that f, f plus f divided g by g tends to some L in R bar, simply by the algebra of limits, then f, capital F divided capital G tends to the same L and vice versa. Therefore, if one of the two limits exists, then it takes with it also the other. So the only possibility for one limit not to exist is that the other does not exist too. So this is the end of the proof. Very, very simple. So let me give you some example. We can also start by sequences, because we introduced little o for uh, functions, but uh, the same formalism is... Uh, uh, valuable for uh, sequences. So we have here that the limit for n going to plus infinity of n, for instance, to the seventh power plus sine of n, n to the fifth power plus n plus 1. divided by, for instance, n to the power e, why not, plus n to the power 2 pi, plus log n plus 9. Okay, this is quite easy to treat because here we have sine of n, n to the fifth power, and this is little o of n to the 7. Why? Because simply here we have that this guy here is uh, estimated by n to the 5th, which is little o of n to the 7 as n goes to plus infinity. And same here, n is little o of n to the 7, and again here, 1 is little of n to the 7. So if we put everything together here, the sum of three little o's is a little o. Hmm? So this is another way of uh, saying uh, gather out the most important term, so the less negligible term if you want. And again, since e is less than 2 pi, we have that this is little o of n to the power 2 pi, and also this is little o of n to the power 2 pi, which is 6.283 and so on. And uh, 9 is li little o of 2 pi, and again, sorry, little o of n to the power 2 pi. And again, we put together all the, the three Uh, stuff here. This is little o of n to the power 2 pi. So by the principle of negligibility, now we can say that this is equal to the limit for n going to plus infinity of n to the 7th power plus, okay, let me write little o of n to the 7, and here we have n to the power 2 pi plus little o of n to the power 2 pi. And this is equal to the limit for n going to plus infinity of n to the 7 divided by n to the power 2 pi. And this is equal to plus infinity because 7 is larger than 2 pi. Hmm? Uh, okay, so the message is that uh, just neglect the little lows, but in this sort of limits we perfectly know uh, 
in the sort of limits we perfectly know that uh, this is how this limit works when we study the ratio of polynomials, uh, sequence made of ratios of polynomials. It was, uh, it was quite standard to act like that, but without using the little laws. And um, now we do it with the little over, the message is, uh, is the same. And we can also do, we can also can compute other limits, for instance, another limit here is uh, the limit for x going to zero of sine of x plus x plus cosine of x minus 1 plus x to the pi and here tangent of x plus hyperbolic cosine of x minus 1 minus x2 okay this is much more complicated Okay, this is a complicated limit, and notice that here we have that the numerator goes to zero, and uh, at the denominator we have again something that goes to zero too. And uh, so this is quite complicated because the question is which terms are to be neglected, which terms are negligible. And here we have to examine every function appearing here and here and here. And then to extract the dominating behavior and the little o's and so on and so on. So here we have that sine of x is equal to x plus little o of x, as we already studied in previous videos for x going to zero, and cosine of x cosine of x is uh, 1 minus x squared over 2 plus little o of x squared for x going to zero. Oh, for what concerns tangent of x, in tangent of x we have x plus little o of x for x going to zero. And let me explain why tangent of x divided by x is equal to sine of x divided by x, 1 over cosine of x. This goes to 1, and this goes to 1. So tangent of x over x goes to 1 as x goes to 0. So we can here repeat exactly the same passages that we did with the sine. So let us, let us do it. So from here we have that tangent of x divided by x is equal to 1 plus little o 1. Again, for x going to zero, we'll write it again at the end, but you always remember that when you write little o, you always have to specify for x going to where. And then tangent of x is equal to x plus x little o of 1, and this is x plus little o of x for x going to zero. Mm -hmm. And here again, there is the hyperbolic cosine hyperbolic cosine of x is equal to 1 plus x squared over 2 plus little o of x squared. So notice here if there is difference between the ordinary cosine and hyperbolic cosine. Here there is a plus for the hyperbolic cosine, but there is a minus for the cosine. So how can we prove it? We can prove it by Recalling the
The definition of hyperbolic cosine, hyperbolic cosine of x is, is equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. And now, remember that e to the x minus 1 divided by x tends to 1 as x goes to 0. This means that this is a not worth the limit that you studied with uh, exercise lecture. e to the x minus 1 to the x is equal to 1 plus little o 1. This means that e to the x is equal to x plus little o of x. Sorry, is e to the x minus 1. Equals x plus little o of x. And then e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus little o of x as x goes to 0. And therefore, e to the minus x is equal to 1 plus minus x. So minus x plus little o of x for x going to 0. Why did I write here little o of x and not little o of minus x? Because, as we said before, little o of minus x is equal to little o of x. So now we can go to our, to our previous limit. So let me write down here an asterisk, and the asterisk then is, so to say, sine of x plus x, so is equal to the limit for x going to 0. Sine of x is x plus little o of x plus x. And here we have a, here we have a cosine of x. Cosine of x is plus 1 minus x squared over 2 plus little o of x squared. And then there is minus 1 plus x to the pi. So minus 1 plus x to the pi, but x to the, to the pi is little o of x. But let me write down here x to the pi. I will be pedantic and perform every passage here. And here at the denominator we have tangent of x. So tangent of x is again x plus little o of x. And here instead of tangent of x, instead we have hyperbolic cosine of x, so we have plus 1 plus x squared over 2 plus little o of x squared. And then here we have minus 1 minus x squared. So Equal the limit for x going to zero, and uh, plus one minus one is equal to zero here. At the numerator we have, of course, x plus x, so two x. And then notice that every other term at numerator is little of x. Because here we have little of x square is. Uh, uh, for stronger reason, little o of x, and here we have x to the pi, pi 3 something, so again we end up with little o of x, so 2x plus little o of x. And here, at the denominator, plus 1 and minus 1 go away, and again here we have x, and all the rest here is little o of x, so here we have x, plus little o of x. So by principle of negligibility, we have lim for x going to 0 of 2x divided by x, and this is equal to 2. Mm -hmm. And, uh, OK, here probably, one is somewhat puzzled by something I, I said, the little of x squared is little of x, so let me 
give you this remark. Little of x squared as a little of x as x goes to zero. Okay. Why? Indeed, uh, pay attention here. What does it mean to prove that something is, is little of x? The only thing you have to, to care about here is to compare this guy here, little of x squared, with x, the guy of which it is <laughs> little of. So the ratio that we aim at studying is little of x squared divided by x. And this is little of x squared divided x squared times x squared divided by x. Hmm? And this is the explanation of the... So I put here indeed. Hmm? Now, notice that this is little o of x squared divided x squared times x. And now it is very simple to conclude that it goes to zero because by definition of little o, this goes to zero. And x goes to zero. So all this guy here goes to zero as x goes to zero. Good. Uh, I want to, to stay here on this computation because uh, we will do computations like that in many other occasions, and uh, uh, you have to learn how to do how to do them. So first, if you you have to prove that something here is little of x, so take this something, divide it by x, and compute the limit. But how can you compute a limit where there is a, an expression here which is not completely defined? We know that this function here, whatever it is, is uh, negligible with respect to x squared when x goes to zero. The only thing that you can do is take this and divide by the argument of the little law. The only thing that you can do. Once you have this, then you can go that this goes to zero. Okay, so this is some sort of obliged uh, passage that you have to do here. Mm. Okay, think of it. And now the next uh, chapter is the algebra of little law, because little law has an algebra, and uh, we will perform uh, computations like uh, this one. Uh, many times. So here we have the algebra of little o. And so the first thing you you have to compute is f times little o of g for x going to x bar is little o of fg for x going to x bar. And this is the multiplication here. Proof I want to prove this f times little of g is little of fg. So the first step is to consider the function f times little of g and divide it by fg. We want to show that this goes to zero, but of course the two f here cancel each other and we, re we remain with uh, little of g divided by g and this goes to zero as x goes to x bar. Okay, so this is the end of the proof.
Mm -hmm. We prove that f little o of g divided f g goes to zero. By definition of little o, we have that f little o of g is a little o of f g. Okay? It seems very difficult, or it seems so simple, or it seems circular, but it is correct. So, second, the second is much simpler because we multiply little o of f times little o of g for x going to x bar, and this is equal to, again, to little o of f g for x going to x bar. Okay, we proceed exactly with the same method as before. So we compare little o of f times little o of g with f g. Oh, sorry. And of course, just uh, separate the coupled factor, so to say. So little of f divided by f times little of g divided by g. Here we have that this goes to zero. This goes to zero too. So everything here goes to zero as x goes to x bar. This is the end of the proof. We prove that the product of a little of f and a little of g is little o of fg by definition of little o. Oop, sorry. Third limit, sorry, third uh, rule of the algebra, multiplication by a constant. Consider a real constant, must be also non-zero, but in this case also with a zero. Okay, if you multiply by zero, everything is trivial. So C times little o of f times little o of f is equal to little o of f. For x going to x bar. So multiplying by a constant does not change being little o. We already used this fact. And uh, so again, C little o of f divided by f is equal to C times little o of f divided by f, little o of f divided by f goes to zero. And so everything here goes to zero. Of course, we can relax the, hypo the hypothesis that C is different from zero. I wanted to exclude it because then it is trivialized, but of course, we can do better. Mm -hmm. Now, sum all the law. We have f is equal to little law of g. If f is equal to little law of g for x going to x bar, and then little law of f plus little law of g is equal to little o of g for x going to x bar. Hmm. Of course, the idea is that um, f is negligible with respect to g. Here you add something which is negligible with respect to g, it's something which is negligible with respect to f, which is already negligible with respect to g. So, and uh, it is clear that the result will be negligible with respect to g, but let us give uh, the proof. So we have that little of f plus little of g divided by g. You have little of f divided by g plus little o g divided by g. Of course, remember that little o must be compared with uh, its object, so little of f divided by f, f divided by g, plus little o of g divided by g. 
So now it is very easy. Little of f divided by f goes to zero by definition of little o. Little uh, f divided by g goes to zero because of the hypothesis that f is little o g. Little of g divided by g goes to zero. And everything here goes to zero. And here we are. This goes to zero as x going to x bar. And um, the fifth rule, we can also give many other rules, but I stop here with these rules because otherwise it becomes too heavy. Next rules is the following. F is a little of G, is a sort of chain rule. G is a little of, a, of H for X going to X bar. Then F is little of H for X going to X bar. The idea is that F is negligible with respect to G. G is negligible with respect to H. Of course, F is negligible with respect to H. H is largest of the, among the three functions we are analyzing here. So let us go for a proof. <clears throat> Typical proof of chain rules, because we want to compare F and H, but we have... Uh, something intermediate, which is g. So we have f divided by g times g divided by h. f is little o of g. This goes to 0. g is little o of h. This goes to 0, too. So everything here goes to 0. That's x. It goes to x bar. This is the proof. Extremely simple extremely simple okay and now we give uh, and now we give uh, based on little laws the definition of uh, asymptote okay what are asymptote okay definition We say that a function f has an asymptote for x going to plus or minus infinity, so they are the horizontal or slant. f f is equal to a linear function, so a line, mx plus q plus little o of 1, as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Here, the idea is plus or minus, or x going to minus infinity. The two cases are completely separate. Okay? So, if m is equal to 0, Then the line mx plus q is a horizontal line, so this is called. Then, then the line y is equal to mx plus q is equal to only q is called a horizontal asymptote. If m is different from 0, then the line y is equal to mx plus q is called a slant or oblique asymptote. So consider, for instance, uh, 
picture like this. In this picture, you can think of having both. You start here, for instance, and then you go like that. And here in this picture, you have a horizontal asymptote here. And here you have a slant asymptote. So, as an example, <clears throat> the exercise is find the possible asymptote of the function f of x is equal to x to the cube plus absolute value of x to the cube, plus 2x squared minus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 5 for x going to plus minus infinity. And here what I mean is that plus infinity and minus infinity must be treated in a completely separate way. So first, x going to plus infinity, we have that f of x is equal to 2x cubed, because uh, here x is positive, so the modulus of x cubed is x cubed, plus 2x squared, oh sorry, plus 2x squared minus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 5. And uh, let me gather decompose the numerator in this way. Here, I reconstruct an, at the numerator the double of the denominator multiplied by x, since here I have 2x cubed and here x squared. So here I have 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 10x, because here I have 2x times the denominator. And then what is missing here is uh, minus 10x minus 1. And here we have uh, x squared plus x plus 5. And here the first three terms at numerator divided the denominator give you 2x and then there is minus 10x minus 1 divided x squared plus x plus 5. And for x going to plus infinity, this guy here goes to 0. So this is equal to 2x plus little o 1 for x going to plus infinity. Then by definition of slant asymptote, we have that y is equal to 2x is a, a slant asymptote of the function f for x going to plus infinity. Now let us go to the other case, the second case is x going to minus infinity. And here we have f of x. Okay, if you have minus infinity, notice that here these two cancel, because this will be very negative, this will be very positive. And so we have 2x squared minus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus y. This is obviously 2 plus little o of 1, as x going to minus infinity. Therefore, y is equal to 2 is a horizontal 
asymptote. as x goes to minus infinity. My opinion, this definition of asymptote is much more interesting than the one you find in the high school, because here you see the idea. What is an asymptote? An asymptote is a line whose distance from f goes to 0 as x goes to plus and minus infinity. OK, here we are in the next uh, video I will talk you about the equivalence so the snake lambda symbol thank you very much